Hallelujah. Welcome back to the channel. Tonight, I'm going to be sharing a word with you titled, Dream Killers. Sometimes we have dreams, and there are those who will kill those dreams. Open with, open with me, if you would, to Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37, starting in the 5th verse. And we're going to be reading all the way to the 11th verse. Say amen when you get there. Yes, Genesis 37, starting in the fifth verse. Now, this is Joseph. Now, he was greatly loved by his father, and his father made him a coat of many colors, and his brothers couldn't stand him. Okay, so now in verse 5, it says, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more, and said unto them, And he said unto them, Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brothers said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. <clears throat> And he dreamed yet another dream. And he told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and his father and his, excuse me, and his brethren. And his father rebuked him. And he said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come and bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. Father God, we come before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, I humble myself before you. I cannot do this without you. Holy Spirit, I am dependent upon you. I ask you to let me speak your words and your words alone and breathe life on this message, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, it said his father observed him. Now this word observed in the Hebrew is shamar. And it just doesn't just mean that he, you know, monitored it. It means he to hedge about as with thorns, as to guard, to take heed of, to beware. So basically this dream scared the snot out of his father. Amen. Now there are four facts that you must know about dreams. Number one fact that you must know about dreams, don't expect everybody to be excited for you. Now this might be something that just sets you on fire and just delights you and you just wanna, you wanna, you feel like you're gonna explode if you don't tell everybody. But guess what? The church, the body of Christ today is full of firefighters. I used to be a firefighter and we had to study how to fight a fire. Well, the church doesn't even have to go to school for it. They just do it on their own. They will quickly put out someone who's on fire for God. They will quickly throw a wet blanket on somebody who gets on fire for God. I remember, I don't remember when this was, but it was many years after I got saved that I was on fire for God. And I was getting people saved. I was getting people filled with the Holy Spirit. And somebody decided to pull me to the side and say, did you just get saved? You act like you just got saved. You need to calm down. And I'm like, why? Because you are lukewarm? You want me to be lukewarm too? Just because you're lukewarm, you want me to be lukewarm with you? You know what? Um, Revelation 3.16 has some things to say about being lukewarm. He said that I would that you were hot or cold, but that you're lukewarm. I will spew thee out of my mouth. And that word spew means to vomit. So in other words, lukewarm Christians make God sick to his stomach. Revelation 2.4, he says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent and do the first works again, else I come quickly and remove thy candlestick. So next time you see somebody that's on fire for God, 
Rather than throwing that wet blanket on them and trying to extinguish that fire, rather than trying to calm them down, why don't you fuel that fire? Throw a little bit of gasoline on it. Let it explode. That's what the church is in dire need of today, is fire. Because a good fire gets burning, if nothing else, people will come to watch it burn. You ever seen a house fire? And you'll see all the neighbors from up and down the street. And they'll come from blocks away just to watch the house burn. That's what we need in the church today. So don't expect everybody else to share your vigor for this fire, for this vision, this dream that God has given you. Number two fact that you must know about dreams and visions. Your dream could cost you something. And we'll say that again. Your dream might just cost you something. Look what it cost Joseph. Genesis 37, 19. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast have devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. There are dream killers everywhere. Who are your dream killers today? Maybe your family, your friends, or maybe you. You know, I remember I had some dreams. I dreamed of being a great chess player one time when I was like 10 years old. They taught us how to play chess at school. And I beat all the teachers. And then they put together a chess tournament at the school. And I took first place in it. And my dad bought me a chess board and I thought he was going to encourage me to be a great chess player but when I continually beat my dad and my brother at chess the pieces would get knocked off the board and they would go to the corners of the room and under the furniture and pretty soon I couldn't find them anymore so then a birthday would come around and I'd get a new chess board and then a few weeks later all the pieces would be missing but then Christmas would come a couple of months later and I'd get another chess board and eventually I just stopped getting chess boards Today, I am, I, I don't want to play chess anymore. I'm afraid to play chess with anybody because I'm afraid that I'm going to lose terribly and look like a fool because somebody killed a dream that I had. I remember I wanted to be a police officer at one time when I was in my 20s and that, got, that dream got killed as well because I didn't know that there were dream killers, that there were people that would try just as soon to crash your dream as to let it take place. Parents, when your child comes to you with that dream that they want to do, encourage them. Don't be a firefighter. Encourage that dream. Amen? Amen. Number three fact that you must know about dreams and visions. A dream isn't always a good thing. It's not always, if it's from God, it's going to come to pass. But it might not always be a good thing. Now remember, Joseph is, well, we didn't tell the whole story, but Joseph gets sold into slavery. Thankfully, they didn't kill him. And he ends up in Egypt, and then he ends up uh, lied on, and then he's in prison. Now while he's in prison, there was a butler and a baker to Pharaoh. And they both had dreams. And they looked for someone to interpret their dreams. And in Genesis 40, 16, it says, When the um, chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I was also in my dream. And behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And the uppermost basket there was all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh. And the birds did eat them all out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree. And the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And that's exactly what happened. So all dreams aren't always good. But if they are from God, they will come to pass. And number four fact that you must know about dreams or visions. Some dreams might be a warning. Sometimes God gives us a dream to warn us about something. 
not to go somewhere, not to trust someone, what it, whatever it may be. I know I had a dream one time. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details of it, but I had a dream one time. God showed me clearly that I was to end a relationship. But the way I had the dream, I misunderstood it or just didn't want to believe it. And I didn't heed that warning. And it cost me dearly not to heed that warning. Now, Matthew 2.12, uh, this is you know, the tomorrow's Christmas, tomorrow morning's Christmas. Okay, so here's my little thing about Christmas here. The wise men that came from the east, they went to Herod. And they told them that they saw the star of the newborn king. And they were come to worship. And then Herod told them, well, look, when you find him, send me word so I can come worship also. But then in Matthew 2.12, it says, And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. In Matthew 2.22, they had fled into Egypt and they wanted to come back into Israel after they heard that Herod died. And it says, But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding being warned of a God in a dream, he turned aside to go into the parts of Galilee. So God will warn us in dreams. So what are the things that I can do and should know about this? Number one, shut your pie hole. You don't need to go tell everybody what God showed you in a dream. Everybody doesn't need to know. And like I said earlier, everybody's not going to be excited about what you have to say. Some people are going to be moved with envy. So how much trouble could Joseph had saved himself if he would have just kept his big fat mouth shut? God could have worked this all out another way. You know, there's an old saying, you probably hear it in movies all the time. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. Well, Joseph ran his mouth and he had to do it the hard way. Um, Proverbs 29, 11 says, A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. So keep your mouth shut. You don't need to tell everybody on God's green earth what your dream was. Number two, you need to pray over the dream, especially if you don't understand it. Because Genesis 48, 40 verse 8 says, And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God. Tell me, I pray you. And God has the interpretation, and he's the only one that can bring it to pass. So you need to pray over the dream. Number three, what do I do or what must I know? Ask God who, if anybody, needs to know about the dream. Um, God told a pastor friend of mine, um, one of my mentors, Dr. Price, he told him, I'm going to stop telling you things if you don't learn to keep your big mouth shut. Everything isn't for us to go repeat to other people. Sometimes God wants us to be in the know, but he doesn't want everyone else to know. And, you know, I'm going to tell you something. I have a dear friend of mine, Arthur, who uh, has gotten on to me many times about talking about dreams and visions in public. And I was always like, ah, I don't care who knows. Well, guess what? You know what? There may be witches listening to that conversation. That stuff needs to be covered under the blood of Jesus because there are people, again, that want to crash your dreams. Amen? Amen. All right. Number, number four. Number four thing that you need to know or you can do about your dream. Number four is write it down. I have, and you should too, a folder on my computer where I write my dreams out. The ones that I believe are from God. Um, you can do this on your computer. You can get a spiral notebook and just dedicate it to dreams. However you choose to do it. But write them down. Then when they come to pass, you'll know. I remember uh, back, I think, in 2006, I wrote a letter to Jesus. And this wasn't about a dream, but this was things that I desired. Now, 
I, uh, I desired to get out of where I was living at. I basically was homeless living at a Taekwondo school. And I told God what I wanted. And I told God, I mean, all the way descriptions of my wife and everything. And one day I was, I was thumbing through my Bible and I opened up Psalm 91 and that letter fell out. And I sat and I looked through that letter and God had answered every single one of those requests to the T. And over and above. Remember, uh, the book of Ephesians says, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly, above all that we ask or think. And God not only met the request in, those, in that letter, but he, he surpassed it. He did things for me that I couldn't even imagine at the time. Amen? Amen. So, so write it down. Habakkuk 2.3 says, For the, uh, excuse me, Write it down. Habakkuk 2.2 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Amen? Amen. Number five. What can I do? What do I need to know? Number five. Know that it is for an appointed time. Yeah, people who move in the prophetic often think that when God shows them something, it's it's going to happen tomorrow. Now, that's not always the case. Um, so, know that it is for an appointed time. God's timelines are not our timelines. I wish they were sometimes. But God does a lot of things in the background that we can't see or imagine. And... They need time to play out. Sometimes, if we're not in God's perfect will, we will cause that thing to drag out. So, try to be in God's will, but know that it is for an appointed time. Amen? Um, Habakkuk 2.3 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come to pass, it will not tarry. Number six, what must I do, what must I know? Number six, know that you may have to go through some things first. There may be a trying point. There may be some things you got to walk through or walk out. You know, God did not take the children of Israel directly out of Egypt and move them into the promised land. He said, I'm going to take them this way, lest they see war and faint. Okay, so you may have to walk it out. Um, I know my dad, I remember my dad one time, my cousin uh, gave him a kiss, his, his, uh, his niece. And she said, Uncle Chester, that's like... Um, Yo, your beard is so prickly. That's what it was. And my dad looked at her and he smiled and he said, sometimes you got to walk through a briar patch to get to a picnic. Mm -hmm. All right, so you might have to go some, through some things. Jesus, look what he did for us. The Bible says that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. I remember one time I was teaching Taekwondo and I have one student there. So one on one session and I had a bow staff um, around my neck and had my arms resting on it like this and he looked at me and he saw Jesus on the cross and he said Mr. John he said why did Jesus let them do all that to him and I said Anthony he did it because he looked through that cross and he saw Anthony and he said yes it's worth it mm -hmm. so know that you may have to go through some things amen amen um Number seven, what do I need to know or what must I do? Number seven is know that God will work it out. It might seem like right now it's not good, but know that God will work it out. And there was a Carmen song. I love this song. It's called Friday's on the Way. Or no, I'm sorry, Sunday's on the Way. <laughs> Excuse me. And... There's a line in the song, in the chorus. He said, it may seem like Friday night, but Sunday's on the way. You know, it looked really bad 
for Jesus the night that he was crucified, the night that they laid him in a tomb. But Sunday came. Boom! He busted that tomb wide open. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Romans 8, 28. And says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen? Amen. So, Amen. So, uh, you know, weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So, keep your mouth shut about the dream. Pray to God, who do I tell? Who do I not tell? You know, we're blessed at True Worshippers Bible Church to have a presiding pastor whose expertise is in dreams. So that's a good person to tell is Pastor Remy Babalola. He does dream interpretations. So write it down. Know it's for an appointed time. But don't go tell everybody. You need to, you need to pray about who can you tell and who not to tell. Some things are for certain people. Some things you just need to keep back. God will put a check in your spirit before you go and tell that thing. And if he does, you better keep your mouth shut or it may just cost you some things that it didn't need to cost you. Folks, that's all I have for you tonight. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and share the video with your friends. And um, God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next week. And I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah.